so this is your second olympic so when you realize that you know that you will be going to paris and i absolutely love the reel that you put up once you realize it <laughs> yeah. so what are your thoughts like what was your first initial reaction when you real when you got to know that you'll be going to paris um i mean the entire say, past 6 months or so has been you know just a journey towards uh, making that happen so it was definitely uh, you know for me more than i would say excitement or a sense of accomplishment i'd say it was a relief this time because uh, it was down to the last minute it was down to the wire and uh, you know unfortunately even though i trained really well i didn't get the qualifying time and uh, we were waiting for the quota spot and uh, we had no idea how any of them had only if the other indians were going to perform so we were just waiting to see who does what and i think after the first couple of races that arinara had we knew he wasn't uh, going to get the qualifying uh, he wasn't going to get a personal best or qualifying time but then uh, we found out that he's going to be doing a trial and then uh, we're like okay maybe he's, there's a chance he, there's a chance maybe he's a, he's confident that he can get it in the 400 again or something like that but i had a few of my friends who have swam the race uh, you know a lot like i'm not a distance swimmer at all i have zero idea what how i mean i don't know what can happen in a distance i don't have much idea so how things work in a distance the event but i had a few friends close friends who swam that race a lot and they were distance swimmers or they are or they were at a point and uh, they were all quite confident like that's not going to happen like after seeing his first two swims but like he's not going to go a person best and uh, that kind of you know gave me a little bit of confidence that the spot's pretty much mine but it wasn't confirmed till it was confirmed so it was just a lot of relief i could say uh, that's nice i mean we are glad yeah. you you are representing uh, india at yeah. uh i mean uh, let me take back to your last olympics where you know mm-hmm. qualified the you got the a qualification mark and you represented mm-hmm. there so how was your experience considering that was your first olympics so what did you learn from the first tokyo olympics um in terms of the swim part of it it was pretty much like every other meet and this olympics is going to be the same and for me every olympics is going to be every every meet i swim is going to be the same it's i'm going to treat it the same way I'm not going to you know look at it like it's something big or something special even though it is but that's just how i've been uh, how i've been growing up and uh, being at so many different uh, major tournaments before the olympics i kind of already knew what to expect like how the atmosphere is going to be with the two call rooms and uh, you know like all the top swimmers being there and uh, it's very similar to the world championships the way it's uh, conducted and i'd swam with a lot of the swimmers uh, that i raced next to so i think the swimmer who came second or third in my heat to some singapore and i've raced with him so many times so i had a good sense of idea what to expect in terms of racing where i think it was new for me and probably the best part of the olympics was being in the village being able to you know be there with the best of the best from every other sport from every country that's something new and that's something you won't experience anywhere else except the olympics and that was uh, extremely exciting for me and um, um i wouldn't say i got carried away and you know was uh, starstruck or anything like that but i think uh, going to this olympics it's i'm going to be a little bit more slow and you know to myself and i won't get as excited as i did last time and i i have understood that there'll be a time where i can enjoy that and you know where i can try to make the most of it but there'll also be a time where i have to stop and realize that now it's time to focus on me i just need to realize why i'm there understand that i'm there to do something that that i'm uh, that i've set a goal towards and focus on that and not uh, worry about you know trying to get the entire olympic experience in yeah i mean that that's a nice thing like what a works yeah. you should should do yeah. and uh, so a little, little earlier in your career probably uh, so you know you were one of the first uh, indians to qualify for multiple uh, finals at commonwealth games so yeah. how was your experience of it like when you realized that you could like you were the first indian to do it and how was the whole commonwealth set up for you back then commonwealth was brilliant i think that could i mean even though there was no best time or a medal i could, I could say that was the best meet of swam because everything was so close everything was so intense and everyone knew everyone not just myself everybody not just me my coaches everybody in the commonwealth games arena knew that 
I could pull it off. That's how it was. Like I was right there, like for 95 meters of the race in the hundred, and in the fifty, I missed it by point one. I was right there, you know. I missed came fifth. I came fifth by point one. I was right there for forty forty seven meters of the race. So it was extremely exciting and intense, and uh, it, it was a really good competition. Like it was healthy competition. All of us got along well. It was just. A good atmosphere to be in, and it would been great to come back with the medal because my best time in the hundred back would have won gold. That's how it was. But um, yeah, I actually didn't really care about being the first Indian to swim multiple finals or things like that. Uh, in my mind, I'm pretty much established in this country, and I didn't really uh, worry about what another Indian has done before or things like that. And I was there for, uh, you know, trying to make, uh, trying to make my goals. Uh, a reality and you know uh, i was hoping for a medal and then uh, to fall short but uh, we also like a few months before the commonwealth games we actually didn't really hope for a medal we weren't going to peak at the commonwealth games because the asian games was coming up and it was surprising that i came that close to a medal so it was a roller coaster but it was a good trip overall so i i really enjoyed that whole thing nice uh, you know in the initial conversation you just mentioned uh, that the sport is mine so i want to know like you know when was the first time that you felt that yes you belong here and what drew to you swimming i started swimming at 2 so i didn't it was i was just pretty much thrown into the pool and nothing drew me to the sport <laughs> but um, yeah i i kind of uh, came naturally to me i i still uh, i'm told by a few people like my mom and one of my coaches who still coaches me now he's one of my he was the one who taught me how to swim um i didn't cry even once to get into the water i might cry now but i didn't cry when i was 2 or 3 <laughs> yeah oh, so that's an impact yeah. <laughs> toddler i would say <laughs> yeah as a toddler i didn't cry but yeah. i might cry now there are days where i just don't want to swim now so <laughs> i might cry now if i have to train sometimes but uh, uh that's something i think took to the, came to the the sport came to me quite naturally and um i started winning quite young so i think uh, that had that kind of set a passion for the sport as well because everyone loves loves success and i saw success quite early and um, it and i think around the age of 15 16 when i won my 15 i think when i won my first senior medal being 15 and my the person next to me probably one of the greatest backstrokers india's had uh, like he's the, like the fastest after me and i think he was he's 10 years older than me and i almost raced him so uh, then i was like okay i'm doing this at 15 so it's probably time to you know pick it up and see how far this goes and maybe there's something more for me in it uh, that that's i mean that's when you said that at two that you could not even swim <laughs> you know you said you started winning young and everything so from then to now how have you evolved as an athlete and how has your mindset changed to like you know from being successful at a young age and then now competing at different levels still trying to give your best and trying to earn those medals so how has your mindset evolved in these years yeah so since my, my very first tournament i won two golds mm-hmm. oh. i swam two events i won two golds and i think since i started competing even at, as a toddler I think for the like first three four years, almost till I was like eight, I didn't lose even once. I didn't even get a silver. So I was just, I always wanted to win. I was been extremely competitive, but that's not just with swimming. It's with everything in life. That's just how I am. I'll get competitive about small things like you know, Uno cards. Which I want to win win an Uno two times. <laughs> yeah, or like which dish is better. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that. It gets that bad sometimes. I mean, it depends with who I am, but it gets. It's gone to like who eats more. Mm-hmm. I've been competitive by like who can eat more, so things like that. And I play a lot of sports growing up, so I can never play a sport where it's just for recreation. It's always a competition. I will always give it my best when I play another sport. I can't just go play for the sake of it, have fun, and come back. So that's how I've been growing up, and um, I think that's carried on even now, but. I think over the years, where I start, did start seeing some losses, it was annoying. It was irritating. It it was frustrating. It still is sometimes. But I've learned how to deal with it better now. I understand that's part of life. That's part of sport. Okay. And you know, I know that if I don't, it's not like if I I I've understood over time that I can't win every time I swim. Mm-hmm. Some days it's just not my day. Sometimes I might swim next to a world record holder. You know things like that. 
but uh, I've realized that that does not define who I am. And uh, I've learned to accept it better. Like I've finished uh, leaving aside my young age group days and sub junior days and junior days. But if you look at my career from 2019, I've finished once, twice, thrice, four, four to five times have I finished, I've finished fifth in a major international meet and I've lost the race by point one. Someone I know well, uh, he is a much senior uh, athlete in a different sport. He was like, this just sounds like the curse of the fifth. Because I come fifth and I miss the medal by a point one. And it's happened four or five times. So the, the way I handled it in 2019 and the way I handled it last year in the Asian Games are very different. In 2019, after that, I was extremely irritated and annoyed and angry and you know I was showing it outside and you know my body language had changed and everything. but I it did happen a bit at the Asian Games as well but a couple of days later I stepped up again for the relay and then the next day I won and then the next day I broke the national record in the 200 feet so I learned how to deal with it better and uh, I think that's a major change that I've seen in the past five six years I've just become a much more mature swimmer and I've learned to deal with things better. That that's nice. I mean, it's like like you said, it's important for an athlete to evolve. Yeah. So like to yeah. know how to deal with it. Yep. Did the curse of fifth affect you any time? Like apart from the mental things, what you said, like was it in your head while you were swimming? As a, no. No, it didn't. Never. No. Nothing. Nothing can ever face me mentally. That that's yeah. that's one thing I take a lot of pride in. I mean, I know going into every race, I'm mentally strong. I've trained well and that's where my confidence comes from and I don't need anything else. Nothing has ever faced me mentally before a race. That's nice. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, you you like when you were talking about from your days, from your youth, from probably from like a very young age, from yeah. a toddler to now and everything. <laughs> so how has the system also evolved? Like as a sports person, what do you think that the crucial changes have been brought in the swimming scenarios and the setup and from the Indian Indian government side or from the all the bodies which are involved yeah. and how it has helped you and the other athletes to yeah. perform better. Yeah, I mean, I've been extremely fortunate that ever since I kind of hit the senior uh, the senior level and I started swimming the major tournaments, I've been extremely fortunate to be funded and supported. So I've had tops since 2018. I, I've had go sports for like four years now. And I did have a chance earlier as well, but uh, my my family felt I was too young because we weren't sure whether I was going to really keep continue this, uh, going down this path or whether I'd you know switch to academics or whatever. So uh, that way, I think I've been quite lucky compared to most of the other swimmers in the country. I've had you know funding from tops and go sports for the past half past half a decade. I've been I've had some private sponsors as well. So that's definitely changed and uh, you know it's changed for changing for other athletes as well now we're seeing our federation play a more uh, a vital role in uh, making sure all the athletes around the country all the top athletes around the country get exposure in tournaments that they need to uh, the government is funding whenever required for most of us um, you know go sports has picked up more athletes ogq is getting more involved there are other uh, reliance jsw there's a lot of other uh, company uh, other organizations getting involved as well and um, you know the sport's a bit more visible mm-hmm. and it's out there in the media and we're getting some good recognition and it's still not where it should be but it's definitely growing and uh, that's a big change that I've seen at least in the past five six years compared to my first Commonwealth Games in 2018 and now there's a major change I mean we just hope we get uh, it gets the more visibility of what it yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so, you know, you had mentioned about the support from the Go Sports Foundation and everything. And as a foundation itself, we understand that how important our role plays yeah. in the part of an athlete's life. So, yeah. how has Go Sports been so crucial for you? Like, how has the journey with Go Sports been? It's been it's been nothing but brilliant. I've had you know more support than any athlete can ask for in the past three four years. And I'm not just saying that because I'm uh, on a call with Go Sports, but you know, I am so relaxed and confident that because I know that they'll back me up with whatever I require 
and I don't have to worry about anything else because of that. And, you know, it just has made things for me at home so much easier because now I'm staying near the academy. This is not my actual house. I've taken a house for rent. And the first few months, I didn't know that I could, you know, claim for it. And they were like, why aren't you? They're like, this is the reason we're trying to support you. These are things that we want to help you with. And then I was like, okay. And, you know, that's been a major uh, benefit on its own. Take, that's taken a lot out of my hands. And, you know, it's been great. But uh, apart from the funding and apart from, you know, giving me, uh, you know, reimbursements and things like that, it's just been so encouraging and supportive in terms of, you know, they're there for me when I require it. I can call, pick the pick up the call and I can call anyone. I can call Ajahn, Samal, Deepthi, whoever I want to anytime if I require something. They take an active interest in, you know, knowing what's happening with us, not just in our sport, but also in our life. So it's just good knowing that someone's there with us. And that plays a major role for a lot of people. True, true. That, I mean, I hope the our association stays for a longer time. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, if like uh, you're going to Paris, so is there like, and you mentioned, I guess that you're a foodie. Is there any, um, part, yeah, <laughs> any particular dishes that you're trying to binge on or you're waiting for the Olympics to get over? What is it? Um, I haven't really thought, planned anything yet. Definitely some French uh, pastries, you know, some Parisian pa- pastries, uh, viral hot chocolate with a croissant or like a pan of chocolate. Um, I love desserts, so I don't think I think there's too many to name. Uh, but I haven't really planned anything yet because I'm only there for three days after my race. So yeah, I'm just gonna explore and yeah. see what I can taste. Yep. We love your. We know your love for your ice cream. So I love. <laughs> yeah. Any, yeah. Any particular flavor that you're willing to try there? Oh no, anything, anything, and everything. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't. Uh, I don't generally pick, I don't pick and choose one actually I never have one flavor of ice cream Ooh. I don't go I always mix more than one I never have one I don't think I think there's a, I think there's only one right way to have an ice cream and I will argue about this with anyone in the world and it is always about mixing the flavors <laughs> okay yeah. uh, so is there any uh, you know in particular outside your training uh, what does your off day look like what do you like to do the most um, I go to a lot of movies. Okay, that's something I do. I would love to play other sports, but I can't play other sports now because I'm in season. But I go to a lot of movies. I almost go to a movie every weekend or every two weekends. I love watching movies. If I'm not going to the theaters, I watch movies at home. Uh, I nap a lot. Uh, I sometimes rarely read, very rarely. But yeah, I might. I listen to a lot of music. Uh, I I started relearning how to play the keyboard again so on an off day i might spend like an hour or two just playing and practicing on the keyboard that's nice any recent watch that you absolutely love and want to recommend to watch to others um what am i watching i was watching gray's anatomy now like before this call okay. uh but i forgot no i watched any yeah, not much. I haven't really. Yeah, I you know I watched Bad Boys Four in the theaters. That was amazing. Okay. And I think tomorrow I'm already planning for uh, Deadpool and uh, Wolverine, and okay. it's out today. Yeah. So I just spoke to my uh, strength coach, and uh, we, we always go to movies together, me and him and a few other swimmers. So I think we're gonna go for Deadpool and Wolverine tomorrow. Oh, that's nice. Okay, one last question. Probably we'll wrap it up. Yep. Is there no any uh, uh, in any particular athlete that you would love to meet or any event that? Rafael you- Nadal. Okay, you have your answer. <laughs> oh, man. So that's a major motivation for me to go to Paris. I knew he was going to be there and it was a chance to get to meet him. So, yeah, I'm going to... That's one thing. I'm, that might be one time where I forget uh, I'm there for a reason. I might, you know, go around trying to find Nadal in the dining hall outside the Spanish team building. Hopefully, he stays in the village. But I have a feeling he might. Okay, that's nice. And hopefully you get to meet me, hear your <laughs> yep. story. So yep. yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for thank you so much. your time and hope you enjoy doing this and yes. uh, wish you all the best for Paris. Thank you.